Hey, it's Dr. Wyrick. I just got back from the uh, the Perinatal Stem Cell Society's annual conference. It was held in Salt Lake City last Thursday and last Friday. When I first heard about this conference, I was very, very excited. I was lucky enough to get in there and to be able to enjoy some of these speakers. And it was two days of information overload of uh, researchers, scientists, doctors, and on all the information you could possibly imagine about stem cells, what they're using stem cells for, where the research is going. And I wanted to share with you just briefly what my takeaway from that workshop was. Number one, it reinvigorated me and reinstilled in me that stem cell therapy really is the future of medicine. This is the direction that medicine's going. There's an army of researchers and scientists from the most prestigious medical schools you could possibly imagine that are doing research on stem cells, the efficacy of stem cells, and where they're going with this is just absolutely astounding. Number two, my second takeaway was that the FDA is actually closer than I thought it was when it comes to getting approval. Yes, they are quote unquote fast tracking things, uh, but I still feel like we're five to 10 years away from actual FDA approval, but they are moving forward. They are looking deeper and deeper into this to get it approved, to get it um, where they can say, yes, it's gonna treat these particular conditions. But what's important right now is this November, in November 2020, there's a deadline from the FDA that's going to make all of these labs comply with their specifications. And this is very important because it allows us to prepare for that date uh, because what you're going to see is you're going to see a lot of the a lot of the unscrupulous things in stem cell therapy go away because of that deadline. I'm excited. I'm excited about that. Last thing was that umbilical cords are needed for this research. And people will ask me, you know, should my should my family member store their cord? Should they donate their cord? Um, storage, I think, unless you have a genetic predisposition for certain diseases, I don't know that storage is the answer. But I will tell you this, if you want to make a donation, if you want to make a contribution, and if it's available to you, I would encourage your family members to actually donate those cords because that army of scientists needs material to work with. So those are my three takeaways from the seminar. Uh, I will do my best to get more information out there to you, uh, but it was an awesome weekend. I'm glad I went, and we're looking forward to where this goes in the future. Thanks a lot. We'll talk to you soon.